Hello, everyone. We're pleased to have you join us. I'm Lauren Costi, Director of Business Development here at CDD. And as your host today, I'd like to welcome you all to our Collaborative Drug Discovery Quarterly Product Update Webinar. So before we dive into the exciting updates we have for you, I'd like to quickly go over a few housekeeping items. For any product-specific questions, please use the Q&A tab in the toolbar. This will help us address your inquiries efficiently during our dedicated Q&A session, as well as answer any quick ones as we go. For all other questions, comments, or general discussion, please use the regular chat box tab in the toolbar. We encourage your active participation throughout the webinar. If you would like to request a one-on-one -on -one customized demo for any of these features, we'll have a poll to easily request one before the Q&A segment. So now let me give you a brief overview of what we'll be covering today. We have four key modules to discuss, each representing significant enhancements to our platform, starting with curves. We'll explore new functionalities that will streamline your data analysis processing and help express complex trends in a concise manner. Jumping into AI, you'll learn about our artificial intelligence integrations designed to accelerate your research and decision making. Next, we'll showcase updates to our inventory management system, improving searchability, traceability, and accountability. Last but not least, we'll walk you through the enhancements made to the electronic lab notebook, including templates and our new annotation tool. Each of these modules have been developed with your needs in mind, aiming to further optimize your efficiency as scientists. We're excited to share these updates with you. Your feedback is invaluable to us, so we encourage you to engage actively throughout the presentation. Thank you once again for joining us today, and let's begin our product update journey. Hello, everyone. I'm Ralph Foster, Director of Business Development at CTD. I'm excited to introduce our new Curves module designed to help you efficiently analyze and visualize complex data. Curve streamlines your data processing and expresses complex trends concisely and visually. Whether you're a biologist or a chemist, this tool will make your research more impactful. Let me highlight what makes Curves valuable, including our newest feature. First, integration. Curves creates an automated workflow from raw inputs to plots, saving time and reducing errors. Secondly, presentation. You have full control over display options with our new color coding feature, enhancing visual clarity, helping you easily share, explore, and export visualizations. Thirdly, comparison. Search across essays to evaluate trends and overlay topics, crucial for identifying promising compounds. And lastly, collaboration. Securely share visualizations in a project-based environment. Our new plot comments feature allows direct communication about specific data points. So in short, the key capabilities include curve overlay, being able to compare multiple results in one plot, now with enhanced color coding, summary curve, being able to convey results over time with a single toggle for quick decision-making, Curve fits being able to analyze with various curves, including our newly optimized bell-shaped fits for complex biological responses and calculations, being able to generate plots using raw, normalized, and calculated values. Whether you're plotting potency, selectivity, ADME, toxicity, PK, or PD data, curves will help you develop a clear, compelling visual data story. Now I'll hand it over to Ralphie for a live demonstration of these features, including our new updates. Ralphie, over to you with a Curves demo. Hi, everyone. My name is Ralphie Fiorenza, and I'm a customer engagement scientist here at CDD. Today, I will be stepping into the role of a biologist running a ternary complex assay against a panel of selected protax, and this will be to showcase CDD's new Curves module. As you can see here on the screen, I've been able to fit a bell-shaped curve and then calculate an AC90 and 99 based on my ternary complex assay data against these selected protax. And how did I get here? In order to utilize the curves module, it has to be turned on. And then from there, your vault administrator would go to settings, vault, and plots, from which they could select from a number of curve fit algorithms available at the time, such as the Hill and Bell equation, and they could even add in lists and pick lists of curve comments to help you all through your QCing process. So once you have the actual curve fit algorithm enabled, you would then go in and create a protocol just like any other protocol. So here I have my ternary complex assay protocol, and then I have my readout definitions corresponding to the data coming out of my particular assay. In this case, I have the concentration and luminescence being captured. I've then asked CDD Vault to please normalize my luminescence 
to controls on my plate so I don't have to do any sort of pre-processing of data. And then I've captured some additional readout definitions of interest to me like the cell line and time point of the experiment. Once I have all of those readout definitions captured, I would create a new readout definition with the data type of plot. And this will allow me and ask me to choose my X and Y for my plot, in this case, concentration and fraction of maximum. In addition, I can actually set a default Y axis range. So for here, I've done negative 0.2 to 1.2 for this particular assay. I've chosen my curve fit algorithm as the bell curve. And depending on the curve fit algorithm that you choose, you will get different options here in terms of your constraints and data calculations. So since I've selected a bell curve equation under my data calculations, you'll see that I can actually set an intercept on the left side of the curve or the right side of the curve. For this particular assay, I'm interested in my near max response. So I'm going with an AC 90 and 99. Once I have my protocol set up with all of my readout definitions and normalization, I would then go to my import data tab and choose my data file. So in this particular example, I'm going to be uploading a raw data file that has not been touched or processed. So it's just right off my plate reader with my concentration, response, plate layouts, etc. So I can choose to just upload this exact file to CDD. And what will happen is we can actually utilize the built-in file parser. So here I have a pre-saved parsing template for my ternary complex data. I simply click Upload File. CDD Vault will take us to this page where we've organized the data into that tabular format and then automatically take us to the mapping step for our protocol readout definitions. I could choose to individually click through and map my plate and well, cell line, et cetera information. But what I've done in this particular case is I've saved a mapping template to further automate this process for myself. So I would collect bell curve mapping, create a new run, and then apply the mapping template. And then all of my mapping has been done for me here in green. All that's left for me to do is click process file, accept the import, and then we've gone from raw data parsed by CDD and actually analyzed and fit to a curve in a matter of seconds. So what do I do now? I'm looking through all of my data here and I've decided I actually want to export a graph with a few compounds on it of interest to put into a presentation or send off to a key stakeholder. So in order to do that, I would just have to click on a particular curve of interest that will open the Curve Mini app from which you can individually interact with the curve. So editing outliers, so flagging your outliers, overriding the curve fit parameters, and even adding those QC comments that I told you about earlier. But what I'm really interested in is actually creating an overlay of two compounds. So I would click this little plus button up here at the top, a window opens up and I can add multiple molecules as well as multiple protocols to a single plot. So in this case, I'm just going to type in the name of a molecule that I'm interested in, and I'll do two molecules, one protocol, launch plot, and we'll open up a new tab, and you'll see in the carousel here, I have my two compounds. I can change the color, shape, and size of my individual curve data points to make it more distinct. And then when preparing my export, I would click the settings button. I can hide those grid lines as well as the intercepts for the AC 90 and 99 and even add a chart title. And then if I go under the statistics tab, if I had replicates in this particular protocol, I can choose to show my whiskers and I can add an arbitrary line to call attention to a specific point on the plot. But I'm very happy with this particular setup. And now for export, I can do PNG or PDF. And once I select one of those, I get additional configuration options. So here I can customize my X and Y axis, 
I can choose to export the structure in the legend, and then really just pick and choose any of the information that's relevant to your export. Click download PNG, and it'll go to your downloads folder. And just like that, we've gone from a raw data file that's been automatically parsed, processed, curve fit, and overlaid by CDD Vault in a matter of minutes, really streamlining my workflow here. And that's all for Curves right now. If you would like a personalized demo for your team, science, and workflows, please make sure you vote in the poll at the end of this webinar. And next, we'd like to introduce you to CDD's AI. Hello, everyone. I'm John Hesler, Director of New Business within Canada and the Midwest of the U.S. at CDD. Today, I'm excited to introduce our AI module, which can help you accelerate your drug discovery by enhancing speed, accuracy, and efficiency. Our AI module creates a strong data foundation within CDD Vault, allowing you to harness advanced AI capabilities in a secure environment. Let me briefly highlight some benefits that make it so powerful. Firstly, an increased efficiency, as our AI algorithms dramatically speed up research and analysis, allowing you to process vast amounts of data quickly. Enhanced precision, as you can provide more accurate predictions, and optimized formulations, reducing late stage failures. Data driven insights as our AI uncovers patterns in large data sets, potentially revealing new drug candidates and mechanisms. The module's key capabilities include a fast AI powered searching where you can explore compounds and patents within the Kemble, Sure Kemble, Enamine, as well as the CDD public database bioisosteric suggestions that enhance potency and improve pharmacokinetics of your lead compounds, computer-aided design that allows you to rapidly search for and group similar structures. Property predictions, where one can uh, access machine learning models for log P, log D, and PKA predictions. AI-ready data, where one can create standardized metadata-enriched data ready for AI analysis. So everyone has some form of AI these days and uh, what sets CDD apart is our focus on synthesizable molecules and our comprehensive patent database search capabilities. This ensures that you're working with viable candidates where you can easily evaluate the novelty of your structures. Moreover, we offer API access to our deep learning technology allowing you to integrate AI capabilities into your own workflows and build custom predictive models. In essence, our AI module is designed to streamline your processes, enhance your insights, and accelerate your path to breakthrough discoveries. Now I'll hand it over to Roland for a live demonstration of these features. So Roland, over to you for the AI module demonstration. Hello, my name is Roland Saito. I'm an application scientist with the CDD support team. Today, I'll discuss deep learning tools available to Vault users. The first feature I'll demonstrate is the deep learning similarity search. This is an internally developed application using a deep learning algorithm to search for molecules in Kemble, SureKemble, and the Zinc library set. Kemble and Sure Kemble will find information like bioactivity and patent information. The Zinc library will have synthesizable, orderable molecules. The second feature I'll discuss is the deep learning bioisosteer tool. This is an application that generates synthesizable bioisosteers of your registered molecules in hopes that it can help with compound idea generation. So I'll go to my vault. I've registered a molecule. This is a clinical compound. It could be part of a, a commercial clinical compound library set. Um, perhaps you're doing drug repurposing, or it could be an internally synthesized molecule or part of a fragment or diversity set screen. You've come across some hit molecules and you'd like to know if those hit molecules or similar compounds have information associated with them. You can click on the deep learning link. You'll see a pop-up window 
of molecules that have been found in these various databases. Again, all of the searching is done within CDD Vault. None of your information will leave the system. Um, here I have Kemble and Sure Kemble toggled. You can also search the Zinc library set. You'll see a Zinc number. You can click on those links. It will take you to the Enamine website, or you can put it into a cart and request a quote. Quite useful if you're doing a diversity set screen, you want to generate SAR around your hit molecules to see if it's an actual hit. Um, you can use these zinc links to then accumulate molecules into the cart and you can uh, request a single quote. In your settings, you can increase the number of hits you can choose to display the patent number. So if it's a sure Kemble hit, there'll be a patent number associated with those hit molecules. Um, you can choose to display the patent numbers that those molecules are in. You can also display the chemical properties and physical chemical properties listed here. You'll see them at the bottom. If the value is colored in red, the number is higher than your search molecule. If the number is colored in blue, the value is lower than your search molecule. So this is a quick way to use color to compare PhysChem properties with your search compound. On the bottom left, you'll also see a number. This is your similarity score. A score of one is an exact match. These molecules are sorted in descending order of these similarity scores. You can also choose to group the hits by scaffold. So the deep learning algorithm will recognize a core. So it's recognized this molecule and it's displaying the different analogs of this scaffold. So you have some fluorines coming off of this phenyl ring, a methyl off this paparazine. So we have a couple of ways to view your molecules. You can also launch the visualization session from here if you wanna plot this information. Um, you can also download the results. Now, if I click on the Kemble link, it will take me to the Kemble site where I can get more information about the molecule. There's a lot of information here. It, all this is within a few clicks of your search results. Um, I won't go through them in detail, but here I, you can get information about molecule features, whether it's a first in class drug, um, if it's an oral drug, um, you can look at things like indication. Uh, the activity chart is quite useful. All of the compounds in Kemble have some sort of bioactivity data. So you can navigate your way to your activity charts. Um, this might be part of a fragment screen. You might want to know if similar molecules hit different proteins. Um, you can navigate to your activity chart. You can click on the chart itself. It will get you more granular information. If it's generating an EC50, you'll get the EC50 value percent inhibition. Um, you can get information about literature, so I can click on the chart here, I'll get more information about document, um, get the DOI, where you can then um, find your way to the original document if you have access to them. You also have a structural alert section. Um, so in this case, it's recognized as sulfonamide, um, but if you're interested, if any of your hit molecules have similar um, compounds in chem the Kemble database, and if there's structural alerts associated with them, um, you can find that here. And lastly, you'll see a set of links at the bottom. If this compound is in other databases, here it's in the clinical trials database. It's also in drug bank where you can get EK data as well as some pharmacology data. Um, you might want to order this molecule from MedChem Express or get the zinc number. Um, all of this information, again, is within a few clicks of your search results in Vault. Now, what the Sure Kemble site will get you is patent information. So this molecule is associated with multiple patents. If you click on the patent, it will then take you to the, the actual document where you can download the PDF and get information within the patent. Now, lastly, I'll, I'll demo the bioisosteer tool. If you click on the bioisosteer link, 
it'll bring up a pop-up window. You'll see the molecule, your registered molecule on the left. Highlighted in blue is the area of the molecule that this tool is generating isosteres for. So in this case, you see a ring expansion with an oxygen inserted, things like ring contractions, um, different types of heterocycles that it's recognized. Um, one of the take home points here is that we are generating synthesizable molecules and you don't have to sift through so many molecules and kind of weed out the bad looking structures. Um, we really aim to, to show only molecules that are synthesizable. This concludes the demo. If you find any of these features could help your research, um, please send CDD support an email or you can contact your CDD account manager um, and we'll be happy to activate the deep learning feature for you. Hello everyone, I'm Jeremy Shelley, Director of Business Development at CDD. Today I'll introduce some important updates made to our inventory module designed to streamline laboratory inventory management. The inventory module offers three primary features that significantly enhance efficiency. Firstly, we have added advanced search functionality. This enables rapid location of samples, reagents, or compounds, and supports structure-based searches and queries across custom fields, all while remaining integrated with other CDD modules for comprehensive data access. Next, we have added a customizable alert system. This provides notifications for low stock levels and approaching expiration dates, allows for the creation of custom alerts based on specific laboratory needs, and facilitates proactive inventory management and, and regulatory compliance. Lastly, we have enhanced our location-based sample association. This capability replaces traditional box-based systems with flexible location tracking, allowing for the creation of custom nested locations such as freezer rooms, shelves, and racks, providing you a clear way to optimize storage space utilization through occupancy tracking. Some additional key features to vault inventory include unique identifier assignment for each sample, custom fields for tracking specific sample attributes, and real-time updates accessible via a secure web-based interface. The inventory module is adaptable to various research domains, including chemistry and biology. For chemistry, Vault Inventory provides comprehensive compound documentation, chemical library organization, and hierarchical tracking from parent compounds to individual samples. For biology, Vault Inventory provides logging of biological materials, detailed tracking for cell lines and tissues, and customizable metadata fields. Take a look for yourself at how the inventory module is designed to enhance research efficiency while maintaining data integrity and accessibility. With that, Matthew, take it away with the demo. Hello, everyone. My name is Matthew Harris, and I'm a customer engagement scientist here with CDD Vault. For today's demonstration, I'll walk you through how a typical bench scientist might utilize CDD Vault's new sample inventory management to help with their day-to-day -day activities. Now, before we dive into the inventory management itself, we'll just briefly talk about how you can set up fields to start registering your samples in your vault. The vault administrators are the ones who will set up these fields for you, and that is done from the settings section under vault and sample inventory fields. There are two areas here. You'll have sample fields, which will help you define the samples that you're registering. So maybe the tube type, any information that relates to the samples as they are being registered in the vault will go under sample fields. And the inventory fields will be able to track perhaps where it's located or any credits or debits that you'll be making to these samples. Now, a typical bench scientist may start their week looking for cells that they need to thaw for future experiments. How they can easily do that here within CDD Vault is by working from the sample search page here. Now, from this page, they can easily search for what they have on hand. Let's say that they're looking for their HeLa and A375 cell lines to thaw for their experiments. They can filter through their entries here, add a filter specifically on the cell type that they're looking for. As long as this is created as a sample field, you can easily filter on it here. And we can, from this list, select the A375 and HeLa cell type that we want to search for. We can now search in the vault, and we have three vials that match that description. So we have two HeLa cell lines and one A375, which are stored here in this liquid nitrogen location. 
it's very key to search before you go into liquid nitrogen because you don't want your cells to be out in the air for too long. Now you can select say two vials that you need, so one from the HeLa and one from A375, and then you can take them from the liquid nitrogen. From the sample inventory here, these samples can be depleted, which allows you to remove them from the sample page and the sample kind of counted inventory. However, the record still remains within CDD Vault that these samples were created. So simply depleting the samples removes them from searching and also frees up that space in the box. So we can just deplete this HeLa cell line here. We'll yes to deplete it. And then also we'll deplete the A375 once we remove them for our experiments. Now, another task that a bench scientist may want to do is now search for compounds that they'll need to use in an experiment uh, that they'll be running later in that day. It's very easy to do this as well. So if you have a list of say three compounds that you need to pull, again, you can filter through the entries that you have in your sample inventory based on the ID numbers that you have for those compounds. Here, we can search for those IDs, and I know I'll be pulling compounds 62, 63, and 64. Once I have those selected, I can search in my vault, and now they come up in my search. Now, the thing is, I'll need to pull these compounds as well as move them to my own compound box, which is separate from the box where they're located. So I need to perform two actions taking a debit of the compound to run for my assay, as well as moving them. So that's very easily done from an Excel file that you can import into CDD Vault using the import data tab at the top. From here, I have an example where I've imported a file, taking again those batches and the samples specifically from the sample inventory. I'll be taking a debit of 25 microliters that I've mapped here in these two fields. And then for the locations, they'll be moved instead of going to shelf A in that compound box, they're now going to shelf B in my own personal compound box. So these debit and uh, change locations can be done very easily from the import data tab in one seamless step. Once that's completed, if I go back to now my sample search page and I look for my own personal compound box, I'll notice here that now I have those compounds moved and I also have the debits that was taken from those samples. So the initial amount that was created was 50 microliters. I took 25 in that move that I just showed you, and now I have 25 left on hand. So it's very easy to move compounds within CDD Vault's inventory as well. Now, lastly, let's say that you receive some compounds from a CRO that you now need to register in your inventory. If the compound box is full, it's very easy to create a new location from the sample inventory. We have that assay compound box, which is now full, but if we just select, say, the shelf that it's on, there's an option here for create a new box. This allows us now to add in a new box into the inventory locations list, and we can call this the assay compound box two. And once we have that created, we can save it in our inventory locations and now update for others to now fill it with their received compounds. And that's all I wanted to show for the inventory module here in CDD Vault. You've been able to see how easy it is for a bench scientist in real time to interact with the inventory on hand and also create new spaces as compounds are shipped into their new locations. Again, if you would like a customized demonstration on how CDD Vault's inventory can meet your needs or just more information, please be sure to vote in the poll at the end of the webinar. And next, we'd like to introduce you to CDD Vault's electronic lab notebook. Hi everyone, I'm Kaylee Anderson, Director of Business Development covering the Southeast US here at Collaborative Drug Discovery. And I'm excited to announce two new key updates to make our ELN even more collaborative and efficient as ever. One of those being customizable experiment templates. Now this is gonna be helpful for creating structured frameworks for any experiment type and seamlessly integrating text, tables, images, and files and ensuring consistency and reproducibility across projects. The other being our advanced annotation tool, which allows users to collaborate in real time with shared annotations, add critical observations directly within experiments, and customize workflows to fit your specific research needs. Keep in mind, these new features complement our existing powerful capabilities, such as rapid data retrieval, 
Our robust search and filter functions make finding information quick and easy. Intellectual property protection, we offer legal compliance features and audit tracking to safeguard your valuable research. Real-time collaboration, so share your findings and co-author documentation globally. And Microsoft Office integration, so access and edit Word, Excel, PowerPoint files directly within the ELN. Moreover, in case you weren't aware, CDD Vault's ELN ensures regulatory compliance with features like audit trails and electronic signatures, which are crucial for meeting GLP and FDA guidelines. Now let's see all these features in action. Kelly, I'm gonna turn it over to you for the demo. Hi everyone, my name is Kelly Bajochin and I'm a customer engagement scientist here at Collaborative Drug Discovery. And today I'm going to be showing you the ELN module. So we are here logged into the vault on this ELN tab. And this ELN tab is the index that shows you all the entries that have been created in your vault that are associated to these projects on the left hand side. If I were to uncheck one of these projects, then the entries associated with that project are then hidden from the list. On this page is also where I can do keyword searches as well as filter my entries by any of these metadata fields that you see here. Being a chemist, I have the ability to do a chemical structure or reaction search simply by clicking on this benzene icon. This will open up the structure editor where I can draw in a chemical structure. I can copy and paste from ChemDraw or I can look up a molecule based on its common name, CAS number or registration ID from my registration database. So here I paste in my structure. If I need to make a modification, I can update that structure. Then once I use this structure, the search will execute and find the entries where that substructure or reaction has been drawn. It will then highlight those in blue to show me the pages where that substructure is drawn. And I can then open up an entry simply by clicking on the link to open up an already created entry. If I did just want to simply create a brand new entry, I can use this create a new drop down and select ELN entry to start from a blank canvas where I can put chemical reactions or procedures for my biological assay or write down any notes um, in an ELN entry. But for now, I'm going to start from an already filled in entry um, so I can click on this uh, link to then open up that particular entry. Here I can add links to other pages in my ELN, or I can also add links to other parts of CDD Vault by clicking this insert link icon. Up at the top, I have a space for a title as well as metadata fields that can be configured by my vault administrator to capture information about the ELN entries themselves. So here I have a uh, pick list to let me know that this is not a final product. Uh, I've set an experiment type to be a synthesis and I can use these fields when I'm filtering back on that index page. Now here, since there is already a chemical reaction drawn, if I want to edit that reaction, I simply click into the reaction to pull up the structure editor and make any edits to my reaction that I need. If I wanted to insert a chemical reaction, I would use this benzene icon to open up the structure editor. Once I fill in a reaction, uh, the system will recognize reagents that you've drawn next to, as well as above and below your reaction arrow, and it will generate a stoichiometry table automatically. If I want to then edit the amounts of each of my reagents, I click into the table to go into this edit mode, and I can change the amount simply by clicking on that amount and updating the amount that I've used and the units. Once I hit enter on my keyboard, the other amounts will auto adjust in the table as well. If I wanted to manually add a reagent or a reaction solvent, I can click either of these icons and use either a common name, a cast number, or a registration ID as well. So here, if I type dimethylamine, it'll find it in my list. 
and I hit enter and it adds it into the stoichiometry table. Now you'll notice any of my compounds that are drawn that are registered in my registration system, the IDs are automatically displayed and I have the option to select a new batch uh, or register a new batch or register a new molecule directly here from my ELN page. Underneath my table, I can click into the canvas of the editor and can start writing my procedure. And so if I just move over to an already filled in entry, uh, you can see where you can start to add in headers and add links to your stoichiometry tables with that insert link icon. You can also attach files with this paper clip icon or by dragging and dropping a file into the uh, body of the entry. Now, just moving over to a less chemistry focused entry, um, we do have previews of PDFs as well as images. So you, if you click on that file, it's going to open up the file in a preview where you would be able to zoom in and zoom out um, and view all of the pages, in this case, of this particular PDF once this loads up. Um, same thing for images. So if I click on an image, it's going to pull up a preview of that image where I can zoom in and zoom out of that image but if I needed to download the image, I have that option as well. For files attached that are Microsoft Office files, you have the ability to expand the file and see the entire file here in line with your ELN entry. And we have an integration with those Office documents. So you can open those Office documents in your browser that you can make edits and the edits will save in your entry uh, once the page gets refreshed. And so if this were a file of data, then I wanted to import into my database. I have that option to do it directly from the entry and doing things like importing data and registering molecules, create links back to these pages once that data has been imported. Once I'm finished with my experiment, um, I have the ability to finalize or lock an entry. So edits can no longer be made. If you want, you can have witnessing turned on so that a witness needs to sign off on the finalization of this entry. And then all of the edits that are made to the page, as well as that witnessing uh, is going to be captured in the audit trail here, which is also downloadable. And that's the overview of our ELN. I'll hand it over to the next speaker. Thank you. Thank you all for a great demonstration of our enhanced platform features and a big thank you to all of our speakers today for their excellent presentations on our latest updates to curves AI inventory in the ELN. And I'd also like to thank all of you in the audience for your attention and engagement throughout this webinar, because your interest and participation are what drive us to continuously improve our products. So before we move on to our Q and a session, I'd like to draw your attention to a poll that's now appearing on your screen. If any of these module add-ons we've discussed today look interesting to you, please take a moment to vote. You can indicate whether you'd like a customized demo or if you'd prefer us to send you some resources to learn more about these module add-ons. Your feedback here will help us tailor our follow-up to best meet your needs. Now let's transition to our Q&A panel. We've received some great questions in the Q&A box throughout the presentation and we're excited to address them. So for those who haven't had a chance to ask questions yet, Feel free to submit them now in the Q&A tab, and we'll do our best to answer as many as possible in the time we have remaining. So let's begin with our first question. <clears throat> awesome. Thanks, Lauren. Hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for tuning in to CDD Vault's Quarter 3 product webinar. My name is Ryan Sensulo, and I'll be your moderator for this Q&A session. Today, I'm joined by panelists Pat Deason, Ralph Fesner, and support member Janice Darlington. We will now begin the Q&A session. The, the first question that was submitted through the chat is, can CDD Vault calculate ratios based on raw HTRF wavelengths before plotting? Janice, do you wanna take this I, one? Yeah, I can take that question, thank you. Uh, yes, absolutely. So what we can do when you have curves turned on and enabled, we can take what usually comes from your plate reader to wavelengths that are formatted into chunks on a, the plate format. And 
we can parse that information utilizing our data import parser, bringing that information into CDD Vault because you wanna start from the beginning all the way through to the end to get that data in and make it more transparent. We can parse that data through, take the raw data values, create, calculate the ratios for them, take those ratios and use them in the plot and normalize that data. Taking that data now through, you can plot it using any fitting that you would like uh, using that curves uh, and having that curves enabled. So, which does lead us to the next question. If you don't mind, I will take that and answer that as well. We have a question from Joe. Can you share information on how to define instrument data parsers? Uh, he couldn't find any documentation on how to create one in formatting. It's very similar to the process of that import data wizard. Now, when you bring in a file, you'll have the option to go through and do the default um, where you take the machine readable format, the long and skinny table, and get that into CDD Vault. Now you have the ability to preview the file, and in previewing the file, you have the ability to parse that data. We will automate or auto-identify some of those chunks of data seen at, as that 96 well format. You just need to assign them and tell us what to do with them. Further down the line, what you can do is save those parsing templates, much like you can save those mapping templates that you create. But of course, we would be happy to walk you through that. That's what the CDD support team is here for. Um, I'll pass it back along to you, Ryan, for uh, more questions. Awesome. Thanks, Janice. The next question that was submitted in the chat was, how do we get access to the new functionalities? Can we demo or trial them? I'll pass this one over to Ralph Felsner. Sure. Thanks, Ryan. Um, so this question probably came in before um, we shared the survey. So yes, we can absolutely um, demo. So if you haven't voted on, I want to learn more, or you'd like to have a demo of um, these new functionalities, capabilities we shared today, um, I'd say the easiest thing is reach out to your account executive. Um, or if you don't know, reach out to support and um, we'll get the ball rolling. Um, so we'll um, set up a meeting depending on what applications you're looking for and what you wanna learn. Um, regarding trials, so setting up a demo, fairly straightforward. We can give you access to the new functionalities. Um, we'll probably loop in somebody from support, set up a, um, like a quick um, training session, orientation session, and give you access to the new application for mm -hmm. a period of time. Um, yeah, fairly straightforward. Reach out to us. Happy to help. Pat, did I miss anything? Awesome. <laughs> that's that's excellent. Yes, we look forward to showing you more. Awesome. Thank you, Ralph. The the next question is going to be: I have multiple rooms with the same inventory storage units. How can I quickly create all of my available locations? Janice, I'll kick love. this one over to you. Yep. I love that question, actually, because I used to use CDD Vault myself and worried about inventory. And now with that new inventory functionality, creating those locations are as easy as ever. And uh, what you want to do is create a branch. And creating these branches, you can duplicate them. So uh, creating, recreating those structures is fairly trivial. You can actually even move them. So say if you have to move it from one lab to another, or even for auditing purposes, maybe maybe a freezer goes down and you have to move everything. You can easily relocate those boxes by dragging those branches to different locations. So thanks for the question. Awesome, thanks Janice. The, the next question in the chat, this one's a good uh, a good segue from the last question. I have multiple rooms with the same inventory storage units. How can I quickly create all of my available locations? <laughs> Sorry about that. How, how do we transition from our current inventory system to the latest CDD Vault version that was demoed today? Janice, I'll, I'll send this one back to you. Okay, okay. 
So someone's using the legacy inventories. Um, you can, of course, help us or we can help you migrate uh, that inventory, but it's fairly trivial. We can take the data that we already have and migrate that data out and migrate or basically export that data and re-import that data so that it gets housed in the new sample inventory fields that are created. The nice thing about the sample inventory fields, as you saw from uh, Matthew, is that you can create your own locations, et cetera, and create your own fields to now capture attributes about your uh, samples. Thanks, Janice. The, the next question will be, how can we use the ELN with our CROs so that their view and access to the data is limited? Pat, do you want to take this one? Yes, I would be. I would happily take this one. Yeah, um, it's it, it's a great question, um, and we, you know, especially because the CDD platform with the ELN is designed to be collaborative and secure, and our customers use it routinely to share data with their CROs. So, you know, if you're a C CDD Vault user already, you're familiar with projects. So with projects is the way that you determine, you know, what data each each user can access and view. And you're also familiar with user roles. So the combination of user roles and projects allows you to designate, you know, what roles and privileges each user has and what data they're able to, to view. Um, the extra capability that we have recently added is structure masking in, in the ELN. So if you have a biology user and you do not want them to see the structure, you can um, request from CDD that an individual be structure masked, and then they will not be able to see those structures. Um, a couple of other examples, if I could, for, you know, how um, our customers are using uh, the ELN uh, with their CRO. So a biology CRO can capture their experiments, and their scientists can then view the pro projects, the progress, and results in real time, rather than waiting for a PDF report to be generated. That example came from an actual customer of mine a number of years ago, so I still like that one. Um, the other use case is where biotech companies provide their chemistry CROs with the ELN to track the synthesis of their compounds. Registration can then be done by either the CRO or by the internal scientist, and you can determine your best practices. Uh, so lots of flexibility there. You know, companies don't want you know to be dictated for how their registration flow is actually done. And then on top of everything, um, we have our CDD support. Uh, is here to guide the setup of the ELN with you and then train the CRO as needed. So we're getting on to Zoom technical sessions, you know, yes. routinely. And, you know, the customer will attend, the CRO will attend, and CDD support will attend. And then we get everybody on the same page so that they understand best practices, what data they have access to, and the whole flow that's been set up. So, yeah, that's how our customers are using the ELN for their CRO research. Hope that helps. Awesome. Thanks, Pat. The, the next question that was submitted in the chat is, common calculations for the bell curve fitting are area under the curve and asymmetry. Can those be made available in bell, bell curve fitting? Janice, I'll pass this one to you. Okay. Um, so what Ralphie presented to you uh, today about the bell curve fitting, uh, those are the statistics, the calculations that are available. We always are taking your feature requests. Area under the curve is something that we have heard before. Uh, we are looking um, to make that calculation with our linear uh, fits. And so going forward, you know, much of what you saw today come from your feature requests. They come from feedback from our customers. And as you can see, we're always improving. So, you know, we we take 
that feedback, we take those questions, we log them onto our roadmap. So can it be made available? That's something that we can look into. And certainly we are taking a look at making calculations like area under the curve um, and, and getting you that functionality in the future. Thanks, Janice. The, the next question in the chat is, do we get a recording of this webinar to refer to later? Uh, I'd be happy to take this one. The answer to that question is yes. We will certainly send this out to all of the attendees for today's webinar. Also, if you do submit questions in the chat, in the Q&A chat, and we do not get to them, we'll be more than happy to follow up with you separately and have the conversation from there. So please feel free to keep using the Q&A chat function. The more questions, the better, and we'll get to them eventually. <clears throat> Moving on to the next question. Is there a feature for bulk sample creation inside of CDD inventory without having to import an Excel file? Janice, once again, I'll oh, kick this over to you. Want you. Me to... <laughs> I was going to say, did you want me to take that one? Um, yeah, Please. for bulk sample creation inside of CDD inventory. So we do have a RESTful API. Uh, we have created a lot of API endpoints. Those API endpoints do tap into the sample inventory. So if needed, uh, bulk sample creation can be automated. They can be bulk created uh, without having to import an Excel file. So great question. Awesome. It looks like we have no more questions in the Q&A chat. Um, so I think with that, we'll, we'll wrap up the session. Uh, everybody, thanks for joining today. Uh, we did cover a lot. Once again, we will follow up with certain questions and there has been a poll. So we look forward to following up with you. And that, uh, that concludes the session. So once again, thanks for joining and have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye now.